Hello everyone, how are you this afternoon? I hope you're doing well. Welcome to Drama Free Friday. My name is Barb Owen and you are at the How to Get Creative show known as Drama Free Friday. So we just usually get started if you're here right at the beginning. Uh, we usually get started and just chat for a minute. And then we get into doing something fun and creative. So, and we all need it. We all need it. So, hi Dorothy, Frederica, Tia, hi Nancy, hello Braddy, uh, hello Vicky, Marion, Ina. Nice to see you all. Just looking at my list of names. Hi Cindy, hi Deborah, hello Petka. Dorothy is here. <laughs> I'm glad. Hello, Dorothy. I hope you're doing okay. Hello, Vicki and Kasha and Annette. Yep, got the apron on. Got the apron on. We're getting messy today. <laughs> Hi, Jane. Good to see you. Patricia and Sylvia. Good to see you. Thank you. I got, I got it before you even told me. That's pretty good. <laughs> but thank you for the reminder. Hi, Magdalena. All the way from Uruguay. Or Uruguay, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. <laughs> Hi, Kimberly. Probably depends on who you are as to how you pronounce it, right? And where you're from. I'm so glad you're all here. Hi, Carla. Dorothy's fine. Good been thinking about you and all of your fellow um, residents of the UK. <clears throat> Hi Kathy. Hi Mark. QT Mark. Nice to see you. I'm not sure I'm gonna guess your name is Margaret. Hi Rhonda. And Sheila. It's great to have you guys here today. Yeah so it is Drama Free Friday. And if you've never, if you've never been here before, hi Patty, hello Krissa, Krissa's here early. I'm glad you're here Krissa, hello Barbara, hi Maureen, and Muriel from Cape Town, wow. Um, it's your first time catching us Rhonda, good, welcome, I'm glad you're here, thanks for joining. Hi Nicole from Jamaica. Wow, I think, you know what, Nicole, I think you might be the first person I've had in the chat who has said they were from Jamaica. That's pretty cool. Yes, it's Margaret. Okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I should probably just write that down on my list that needs to be, desperately needs to be retyped. After I see people in the chat for a while, then I remember names. But until then, after I've, you know, until I've seen you for a few times, I'm always going, hmm. Hi, Judy. <clears throat> yeah, I know, Dorothy. Definitely. Definitely. But you know what? Um, that's one of the reasons I'm here. And it's one of the reasons I do this show every Friday if, if at all possible, without fail, because I know that there are somewhere in the world people need it, and um, that's why I continue to do it. And we have we have done this show first on Ustream, now on YouTube. Um, <clears throat> I've done it pretty consistently with very few breaks in it for about five or six years, and that's one of the big reasons I continue to do it because there's always some place where people need a break. And you know what? Sometimes it's me <laughs> that needs a break from from the stuff. And that is how it got its name, Drama Free Friday. Hello, BJ. Hi, Mayor. Um, hi, Sue. Yeah, it's great to have you guys here. So sometimes, uh, sometimes you just have to just, you know, regardless of what's going on and that is how how I act here regardless of what's going on we just take a deep breath and and suspend reality for a couple of hours and just do something else and um, sometimes that's enough 
to just give you whatever you need to have in order to go back and face, you know, difficult things. Hi, Linda. It is great to have you guys here. Okay, so um, we've got a good crowd coming in. Just a, another couple sips of illegal fluids. I don't think that the technical department is here. At least he hasn't poked his head in yet. So I'm perfectly legal with the illegal fluids. Oh, thank you, Krista. That's very sweet. Oh, thanks, Dorothy. Hi, Debbie. Uh, <laughs> Debbie has lots of drama there. She's got Rufus setting her dog off in barking sprees. Oh, boy, do I understand barking sprees. Let me tell you. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Pavla. Yes, let me tell you. There is a, I don't know if the dog lives behind us or if it just comes to visit. But the people behind us are the ones that called animal control on us several years ago because Muppet was barking more than they wanted her to bark. And so we've worked very, very diligently to control her barking. We're very careful. We never leave home and let her be outside and all that kind of stuff. You know, we've been very diligent about that because we don't want to cause a ruckus. Well, somebody back there has a dog that just barks and barks and barks and barks. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hi, Monique. Uh-oh. I just saw the technical department is not here. <laughs> oh, good, Nancy. That's great. Um, hi, Josie. And um, so Muppet goes out, and if that dog is out on the other side of the fence, she is ready to rip its head off which is kind of funny because you know they you know they come out and they're trying to control their dog which is starts it through the fence and it's not controllable and I'm like hmm it's, it's kind of good that you got a dog you can't control its barking because <laughs> at least we're working on ours <laughs> hi T all right drama free Friday Illegal fluids off the table. So last week, um, if you were here, you got to see me do some wood burning, which was kind of a, an experiment in a way. The wood burning was not as much the experiment as the um, coloring medium, which were the scribble sticks. And so I thought I'd show you the finished piece when I got it all done. Now, it's all put together, so we're going to have to do this a little bit at a time. So this is this piece you did not, I don't think you saw me do any of this one. This is the tall one. <laughs> yeah, Chelsea, all night long. Ooh. Mm, yeah, all night long is no good. Um, so this is this house these are wooden houses that my husband cut out for me some time ago I'm gonna give you some dimensions just so you have an idea this one's 11 and a half inches tall so it's it's pretty tall okay and these were in pieces and then I had him put them together for me so this one you didn't see on the stream and um, so some of these patterns like this one is is a, a Zentangle pattern I think I don't know the name of it because I'm not good at that. Um, you're moving, Carla? Well, gosh, bless your heart. I hope uh, I hope that you have a really good move. Hi, Auntie Michael JZ. So this is this one. So everything on here, and I'll give you close-ups with it in just a second, but everything on here has been wood burned. And then this one has been stained with the Scribble Sticks Umber scribble stick okay so that is this one and this is the umber so this is this dark brown color so that's what I used on the the ones that I didn't want to add color to so these are from the scribble stick sets hi Jan and then the next one and I've connected them all together the next one you saw me do on the stream 
And so this one started out with a rubber stamp, this one. So these are stamps, okay? Just an outline stamp. And then I burned the stamp where the stamp lines were. And then I drew in some lines with a pencil and um, burned those lines. This is a wood burning tip. And these are wood burning various tips down here. I showed you how I was changing the tips. The words on here are from the Tim Holtz Big Chat sticker pad. And then the one on the bottom, you got to see a, a portion of this one done on the stream. And again, these are patterns. Let's just call them patterns. <laughs> some of them are probably Zentangle-like and some of them, maybe I just made them up. I don't know. But all of these are tinted with the scribble sticks. So I'm going to give you a real close-up look at them so you can see what they look like. up close. Let me get stuff out of the way so it's not distracting you. And they're all hooked together so um, and that's as close as I can go but I want you to be able to see the details. Now this one this one also has some black scribble stick. When you get up that close to it you can really see the black and what happens where it's not blended super super well what happens is this is raw wood and sometimes the the pigment and the water just suck into the wood so fast that you can't you can't actually control the blending aspect of it okay so but I just want you to be able to see up really close what they look like this pattern was particularly easy to do with a wood burning tool because everything is straight lines you just have to know where you're going and uh, that works out really well this one worked out Sorry about the glare. This one worked out really well as also because, again, straight lines. And um, thanks, you guys. I'm glad you liked them. And this one in here, the window, this was another tip that was in one of the wood burning sets of tips, kind of a target sort of looking tip. And so I just used that and overlapped it a bunch of times in the window. And yes, they are varnished. And so here is the next one. This is the one you saw pretty much completed on stream. But this uses the different colors of the scribble sticks, which I have to say I really enjoyed using on the raw wood. And aside from that one area, which I think was just that section of the wood, they blended out really beautifully. So you can see all those. So this is a wood burning tip right here that I made leaves with. You can also make flowers with it and other designs. And then this is the bottom one. Yeah, it's funny, Cindy, by the time I see your comment, I don't know which one you're talking about. <laughs> so, um, and so this is the the other one but this has this has a little tiny round tip that I used to do the dots and this one up here this is another tip that has you know so you get different size dots depending on the tip and again in here same thing so this one has been this one has been tinted only with the umber the sides I used Dina Wakeley's umber acrylic paint and I painted the sides and the bottoms. Okay, so that's done with the umber acrylic paint. And the reason I used the umber acrylic paint is because it went with, you know, her color palettes, the same across the mediums. <laughs> Hi Jean. <laughs> We know, Jean. We know you hate YouTube Live. Sorry. I'm sorry you don't like it. So there is the umber color right there. And so after that, then they have been varnished. So you can read the process. If you want to know exactly what I did, you can go to howtogetcreative.com and you'll see the post right there. And you can read the exact um, process and so forth. So there is what I did and then to put them together 
I went to the hardware store and bought some little, these are just little screw eyes. And then this is just stuff from the craft store. It's just a lace, leather lace, and I use those to connect them together. So because it's long and skinny, and it's very long and very skinny, because this one is 11 and a half inches. This one is six and three quarters inches. That's the next one. And the bottom one is five and three quarters. So it's, you know, it's a long skinny piece, but that way, and then I put, we put a sawtooth hanger on the back. Oops, sorry. That was probably really loud, and I apologize. <laughs> but that way, it can, it, you know, there's those places in your house where you have those little skinny spaces. This is perfect for that. So, yeah. I know, Jean. Jean hates the chat. Jean hates YouTube Live. Jean hates everything about it. <laughs> Nothing I can do. Anyway, okay. Okay, so that's that. And that's using scribble sticks as the tinting medium for the raw wood. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do some jelly plate. We're going to do some mono printing on a gel press plate. I Most of my plates that I have, and I have quite a few of them in different shapes and sizes, um, most of them are by the company, by the Jelly Plate Company. I do have one plate that is by the Gel Press Company. Okay. Um, hello, Anastasia. Uh, um, just, I was just checking. Hi, Becky. Thanks. I'm glad you enjoyed seeing it. I just thought it was it was nice for you to see the finished project for real anyway so we're going to be using today i have not played with this this is this is brand spanking new well it's not new but i just haven't used it yet this is by the company gel press and this particular one is the 12, this is a square plate and it's 12 by 12. Now, when I looked for a link for the 12 by 12, I could only find the 12 by 14 gel press. Um, but this one that I'm using, as you can clearly see, says 12 by 12. <laughs> I bought it in a scrapbook store. And so I don't know if they made a limited number of those or what the deal is, but anyway, so I am working on 12 by 12. Just so you know. Uh, question, do you know if Neos would work instead of scribble sticks? I don't. I haven't tried them, but I sure would give it a try and just see. That you can't lose anything. Yeah, you can't. Hey, Debbie Boring. You can't lose anything by trying. Hi, Josie Gitto. Gitto. Nice to see you. I'm so glad you're all here. Thank you so much for coming and spending Party of Drama Free Friday with me. So what we're going to do is I'm going to print on some big sheets of paper. That's why I'm using the big plate. So, um, and also I wanted to see how I like the big plate. So that's what we're going to be using. So this is the paper that I'm going to be working on. This is the Canson Mixed Media paper and these are big sheets. This particular size is the 14 by 17 inches and you can see the centimeter size it's 98 pound or 160 gram okay hey shoe okay so i'm just opening up the um, tablet the pad and i'm going to pull out a couple of sheets and we're going to Today I'm going to show you part of what we're going to do and then next week we'll actually do something with these pieces of uh, with the stuff we're going to do today. So I have a couple of sheets of the paper. I'm going to go ahead and remove the um, perforated section. Some people save these and use them. On the plate they do make interesting designs. Oh, 
cool. Vicky's in the class and she's just about to use her gel plate for the first time. Cool. So I'm just getting rid of these just because I want the paper to be completely flat and these um, perforation spiral deals um, just aren't very friendly sometimes. Uh-oh, Annette, take a deep breath. <sighs> take a deep breath. Lots of deep breaths sometimes. And just so you know, Annette, <laughs> I understand your feelings. <laughs> I understand your feelings. And Annette, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I wrote a book called Normal Doesn't Live Here Anymore. <laughs> and after you read that, you'll understand that I know what you're saying. Anyway, back to the show. <laughs> ah, okay. So what I have my plate on is a piece of plexiglass-like um, plastic. It is, I believe, it's Lexan, I believe is what we're using. But you can see it's big enough, the plate is big enough that it doesn't completely fit on the, uh, in the shot. So we're just going to do the best we can. Now, if you get into doing, and all the supplies pretty much that I thought I was going to use today, I did put links below in the description bar, or in the description box, so you should be able to click on things to look around if you want more information. This is a really good resource, this Jelly Plate Printing Mixed Media Mixed Media Mono Printing Without a Press by Joan Bess. This is a really good resource if you enjoy. Um, let me move the plate so I don't want to set anything on top of it. Uh, if you enjoy the jelly plate or gel press plate or any other kind of mono printing plate that there might be, this is really a good book good resource book with lots and lots and lots of ideas it is well worth the investment in this particular book if you like doing mono printing and working with a plate and there's even a section in here by our friend seth after there he is he was here for a creative chat in case you guys might have missed that the recording is there so you can watch our creative chat he was a fantastic guest and um, and Julie Fafen Balzer and Kate Crane and a bunch of other people in here. So anyway, it is a, an excellent resource. BJ bought my book, the Kindle version. Oh, good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. All right, so here we go. Um, hi, Allie. Welcome from Istanbul. Good to see you. I haven't seen your name in the chat for a while. Oh, good, Annette. I'm glad. I'm glad. We just have to keep breathing. <laughs> just keep breathing. <laughs> okay, Annette. Here, Annette. This is this is highly a highly inappropriate thing that I don't normally do on stream, but I'm going to tell you a joke. Are you ready? Are you ready for a joke? Since we're talking about things. Um, since the, the testosterone came up in the chat. Okay, I don't normally say things like this, but I, I have to do this to cheer you up. Okay, so here you go. Are you ready? Annette, are you ready? What would you have if you had a mothball in each hand? If you had a mothball in each hand, what would you have? A very big moth. <laughs> Hi, Gemma. <clears throat> <laughs> I know. Let's go back and jelly plate print, shall we? Let's print. Let's mono print. <clears throat> I couldn't resist. It just seemed too appropriate for Annette. Okay, so here we go. So what I have here <clears throat> is I have a, uh, this is a pad of palette paper. So it's shiny on one side and it's just paper on the other side. Yeah, pardon my crassness, that just, you know, I couldn't resist. <clears throat> and the chat comes to a complete halt, so I must have scared everybody off. 
Christy. Oh, no, my granddaughter got here just in time for a bad joke. <laughs> Hi, Christy, my girl. I love you and I miss you. I miss you, girl. I miss you. I know it was bad. I had to do it for Annette. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use acrylic paints. I have them in tubes. Um, I have an assortment of some stencils and my hand, my favorite masks that are hand shapes. I also have some rubbing plates to add texture if I decide to do that. The link is in the chat or in the description box if you want to know more about these. These are the pattern op art. <clears throat> <laughs> You're welcome, Annette. That was just for you. I wouldn't do that for anybody else. <laughs> I know it's lame. It's to totally lame. Hi, Jillian. It's totally lame. I don't have any more. <laughs> I don't have any more. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here, Christy. That's for my granddaughter, but, you know, like, pitiful. Pitiful. That's lame. That's lame, but, you know, she knows. Um, I told you my one joke I know. That's it. I don't have any more that I can tell in public. Okay, so that's what I have here. And then I have also my brayer. So I have a speedball brayer. And I also got out, I don't know if I'm going to use these or not, but these are patterned brayers. And I don't think I put the link in the description box for these, but these are the patterned brayers. You get two of them. The way I bought them, you got two brayers and one handle. Okay? So that's how, these, how I bought these. I've also seen them where they're much smaller than this, and, you know, you probably can get them different ways. Um, but that's how I have them. I don't know if I'm going to use them, but I have them out anyway. And I have a couple of soft texture tools. So that's what I have here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to print some paper. Okay, so that's what we're doing. And I've got myself hemmed in with too much. I've got to move some stuff for a second. So everybody hold the fort just for a second. Which I know is very boring. And there's nothing going on, but give me a second. Okay. I don't think we're ready. Okay, here we go. I'll put my face up here just so you know I'm here. <laughs> okay. Tech support is here. Yes, he is. He already poked his head in. <laughs> Hi, Melissa. Good to see you. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to, so you'll know what the process is going to be. I'm going to be putting some paint on here, on my palette. I'm going to be brayering it off on the palette and adding very thin coats of paint onto the plate. And I'm going to be printing in lots and lots of thin layers. So that's not the way I normally work, but that's what we're going to do today. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to put a small amount of paint Okay, just little amounts of paint. I'm then going to brayer it out like so. I'm going to add this in different parts of the plate. Now, because it's very thin, I'm going to have to print these fairly quickly. So, because it will, I do have a fan going. Oh, Allie, I'm so happy for you. Becky because that's just how that that's just how they are <laughs> now I don't know if you're going to be able to see that but it's just barely tinted just barely tinted that green and I'll try to remember to tell you the colors I'm using this is brilliant yellow green and I'm just going to leave the the paint tubes out on my my uh, area here and um we're going to just go for it. So it's picked up most of the paint, but not all of it. Whoops, I almost broke my own rule and put it on the plate. So most of the paints I'm using are Liquitex Basics. 
So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put paint. Just kind of get, first of all, I'm kind of conditioning the uh, jelly plate because it's brand new. And second of all, I'm just wanting to get paint on the paper here and there. And you can tell I'm not even looking. I'm just just putting paint on. Okay. All right. I'm going to get out of the picture so you guys can actually see the whole process. So you can see I'm just doing very, very light layers. Um, okay. So let's put a little bit more. I have a little bit more of this paint color left. So we're just going to see if we get any more off of this. And I have two sheets of paper, so I'm going to just kind of work back and forth. And then I'm also going to work on both sides of the paper. Okay, so this is another, another sheet of paper. So you can see very, very light. As we get more layers built up, you'll begin to see more colors showing up. So let's go to another color. So that color that I just used was bright aqua green. This one that I'm going to use now is brilliant purple. And little, just little bits of paint. Okay, just little bits of paint. That was actually probably a little more than I needed. So I'm just kind of barely sweeping across the plate. Even is complete with some Muppet and uh, some Chance and Charlie here. Now, could you paint the paper with a brayer? Sure, but you're not going to get these super light layers like you can get doing it this way. So that's one reason I'm doing it this way. I'm going to put use a little bit more of that purple. And then let's just run this other one that has polka dots in it. And then I just ran some of that purple right over on this paper. Again, it's all about layers, so I just used some of the paint. Now I have some of it on here with some of the texture, so let's see what we get. You can see. Yeah, the reason that I'm not putting the paint right on the plate is because I want super, super, super thin coats of paint. I am so glad, Allie. I'm so glad. Okay, so I'm going to use up the end of this purple paint. And I have a section of the paper up here that has had no color, so I'm just seeing if I can pick up what's left. Okay, so very, very pale, and because the paint is so thin, it is dry as fast as I'm printing, it's getting dry. Okay, so let's go to some fluorescent pink. And so I'm going to put a little bit of this fluorescent pink. This is the Daler Rowney. Now fluorescent colors do strange things. Um, this is Daler Rowney fluorescent pink. This is the System 3. Fluorescent colors can do some weird stuff. Um, you just pretty much have to be able to just roll with the punches with the fluorescent colors and because the paint is so thin I don't know how much we're going to get off of it but it will come up in subsequent layers. 
so not much. Like I said, fluorescent colors do weird, weird things. Okay, so let's take a look at this sheet all the way around it at the moment because you've been watching me print. And so you can see little bits of the colors all the way around. Hi, Dana. Good to see you. Okay, the other sheet we've not done very much to yet, just some purple. And this one, this first one that I just showed you, this is completely dry. Absolutely completely dry because the coats of paint are so thin. But that's just what I thought would be fun to do. All right, let's use some more colors. I'm just randomly pulling them out of my uh, box. This is Master's Touch Light Magenta. Good, Allie. Just keep creating, my friend. Keep creating. Get your journal out and do art or writing. I'm not even looking where I'm putting color. I'm just simply putting it on here. So there's bits and pieces of that color. So let's see if we can get some more. So I'm basically tinting the paper. And because the layers are dry, each layer is pretty much dry as I'm working, um, the you're able to work in complementary colors simply because the layers are dry if the layers are not dry in between you're not going to be able to do the complementary colors without them turning muddy so i'm using yellow now trying to get it out of the tube this is primary yellow basics liquitex basics primary yellow and again what i'm doing is i'm brayering it out on a piece of palette paper so that I get a thin application of paint and that way I can control I have some control over the color going down not a super amount but I have some You can see, hopefully, that I have the yellow that is still a nice clear yellow, a nice clear yellow here, and it's going right over purple. And purple and yellow are opposite on the color wheel. As you can see here, here's violet. Right across the color wheel is yellow. Anything that is straight across the color wheel from each other um, usually makes brown or muddy colors. Thanks, Vicki. Just check in the chat for a minute. Good. Good, Allie, that is good. I mean, who couldn't look at this and be happy about that? I mean, that's pretty yummy stuff right there. Okay, let's um let's do some more yellow because I want to print on the other paper too. So I'm going to use a little bit more of that primary yellow. And before I print with it, um, let's pick up some yellow dots. So I'm just picking up some of the paint on the palette and just put some yellow spots. Because who doesn't like yellow spots? I mean, yellow spots have got to make you happy, right? 
And then we're going to pick up some yellow that's on the plate here. Thanks, Debbie. That was sweet of you. Okay, so we've got a little bit of yellow. Now we're building up some really interesting colors on the plate here. And we'll pull, you can see all that. So we'll pull that off after a while. But for the moment, we're going to keep going. And maybe we'll switch and do some other, you know, kind of more traditional mono printing after bit. But we're going to keep going with this for a little bit till I get colors on the plate, on the papers that I want. And I'm just going to go until I uh, feel like they're good. This one is light blue permanent. So we're going to use some of that. Now my palette paper is getting, is starting to get a little bit, um, this is a little bit wet on the palette paper. So what I'm going to do for a second here is I'm going to see what I can pull off of the palette. So this is not my jelly plate. This is the palette. I've been brayering the paper. So let's see if we can get any of this to come off. So we've got some of that. So I'm printing off of the palette as well. So there's some paint coming off there. Okay, so that dried this up enough that I should be able to put some more paint on it. Okay, so back to, this is the 12 by 12 gel press plate that I'm using, 12 by 12. And this color is light blue permanent. So let's pull some of the blue around here and there. And I'm giving it some pressure as I print to pull um, the color up. So as you can see as we just keep adding color that it's building more and more layers of color and yet they're all still there so I'm going to go back to the brilliant yellow green and add a little bit of that so this is where I got it there So we've got some of the brilliant yellow green. We've got some white space up here. Let's see if we can get some color up there. Okay. So we've got a little bit of green coming in. So let me show you on the other camera and maybe you'll be able to see the colors a little more. A little more intensely than what you're seeing with the camera that I'm showing you the plate on. Somewhere in between these two cameras, eventually we are going to have cameras that are totally accurate, but somewhere between this camera and the one I'm working on is the true color. So it's not quite as bright as what you're seeing here, but it's not quite as dull as what you see on the other one. So there you go. Okay, so here's the other sheet that I'm working on. So this color is a little more brilliant that you're seeing than it is in real life, as we say. This is where I took the paint off the palette. Okay, so we're going to keep going. But I just want you to see the comparison of the color. 
and let's see what else do I want to use I think I want to use some metallic so let me pull out oh and I really love I really love this one other color this one I really love this color looking for my metallics okay here's my silver I know I have gold in here somewhere I have some copper okay this is the gold all right so let's go with this one first this is the fine touch cad yellow medium And I'm going to just switch palette papers because this one is, is got, it's a little wet. But the palette papers, when you work, you know, brayer them like this, these are perfectly usable papers for other purposes. So it's, it's not wasteful if you hang on to them, right? But I also wouldn't feel bad if I did throw it away. If I have a purpose in mind, I'll hang on to it. If I don't, I will pitch it. So this is the Cad Yellow Medium. So let's put some of this in here. So yellow brightens everything up. So a little bit of yellow here and there is always good. Always good. Okay, so now, so we're just going to keep working on this one sheet for the moment. We're just going to keep working on this particular sheet that I've been showing you. I'm going to work on this one, and then we're going to work on the other one. So let's put a little bit of gold. This is the Liquitex Basics Gold. See if we can get some gold going here. So this is just going to sit on the top and this is going to be real, just add a little sparkle on the top. And you're not even going to be able to see it, but we're going to put some more. I'm going to see if I can get enough on here that you're going to be able to see it with the and still be able to maintain the whole concept of light layers. Okay, I'm going to have to put more because that's not going to be enough for you to be able to see. So this is a little bit more than I would usually do, but I want to be able to show it to you. Okay, so right in here, that's the gold. Now, it's probably not going to sparkle for you yet. But I just want little bits and pieces of the gold here and there. Okay, and I still have a little bit on my palette, so we're going to add a little bit more. So just adding little hints, and here's some of the gold right here. You can definitely see it there, and up here, and over here, and there. So those are all the little hints of gold. And so now let's put a little copper on it. Let's see what we can get. The copper is a little thicker. The color is a little pastier, and this is also coming um, from the Liquitex Basics line. So we've got copper. Oh, 
Okay, so what we've got here is copper, copper, various places with the copper. And then I'm going to show it to you with the other camera so you can get a little bit more of an idea of what it looks like. Lovely the way it's coming out. Okay, hopefully you can see it. Okay, this is copper up in here. I don't know if I'm going to get it to reflect in the light enough. But there's bits of copper and gold. So this is copper up in here. There's some of it in here. Over here is the gold. You can see the gold kind of shining in the light, reflecting, and so forth. Okay? All right. So let's um, let's clean off the plate here because we've got a lot of um, a lot of stuff going on on this plate. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a a uh, craft paint. And I've got some, this is white craft paint. And I'm going to add it right onto the plate. And this is a lot more paint because uh, what I'm after is to get it to loosen up the paint all these layers of paint we have on the plate. And see if we can get most of this to come up. Okay, let me get some cardstock. white cardstock supply over here is about empty. Okay, so let's just put a piece of white cardstock on here, a piece of white cardstock here. And a piece of deli wrap. Up here. quite reach the whole distance so okay so what we're going to do is see what we can get up see what we can pull off the plate at least we'll get some of it off so we can just keep going good enough so that pulls off some strips. Those actually would be good for um, turning into kind of a washi tape type thing. Add some adhesive to the back. Make your own washi tapes. So that is all of or a lot of the stuff that we were doing. Let's see if we can get any more off. As it was building up the thin layers of the colors. So there is a really lovely print of color. I'm telling you, who couldn't like that? Who couldn't like that? Look at how pretty all of those layers of color. Isn't that nice? Pretty. I know. It does make you go, ooh, doesn't it? Um, let's 
So I'm going to see if I can, by some chance, get up any more of this. If not, we're just going to keep going. No, not really. Okay, so we can keep going. But those are nice. Sometimes the junk stuff that you do, you, you think is junk, is prettier. Sometimes the junk stuff is prettier than, you know, what you're actually intending to do. Christy loves that. Good. Okay, so we've got this piece that we were building. And then we've got this other partial piece that we're building. So what I'm going to do now is this one is dry. This is completely dry. All those layers of stuff we were doing because they were so thin, they're dry. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work on the back side. Just, well, let's see. Do we want to do that or do we want to just do this? You know, we're not going to do that. Change my mind. It's my prerogative. I can change my mind. So we're just going to work on this sheet. We're just going to work on one side. Before we go, let's clean up this plate a little bit. The paint is a lot easier to get off when uh, it's relatively fresh. There are some people that never clean their plate. Um, other people do. I'm one that does because I like, I personally like to start out with a clean plate when I uh, start printing the next time. If you really need to get the plate clean and you got crud paint stuck on it, really, really stuck on it, then if you get hand sanitizer, and I've tried several different kinds, for me the Purell brand works the best. It does kind of look like the Distress Oxides, doesn't it? Interesting, huh? But the... Uh, Hand sanitizer, I find, will get most of the crusty paint off of the plate, even if it's been on there for a while. Now, if it sits on there a really long time, you're probably going to have to work on it a few times to get the paint off. But I get most of it off. I'm not super upset if there's some of it that stays on the plate, but that's, you know, that's clean enough for me. Clean enough. Okay, and it's a good idea when you're doing this kind of stuff to put a uh, barrier cream on your hands before you start. I forgot. But, it's a good idea. Okay, so let's go back to this sheet. Hi Angelica. Hi, CB. And Azure Muse. Diane. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start playing with this and adding some more stuff to it. So let's play with... Um, let's print with some of the... the um, pop art plates here. Which one do I want to use? Maybe that one. So what I'm going to do to print with this is I'm going to put some color on it, or on my palette. So I'm going to put color on my palette here, and then I'm going to brayer it on this, and I'm going to print with it. So let's use, we got to have something that's going to show up. So let's go to this is gray purple, so let's use some of that. Doesn't take a lot. All right, and let's print. So just getting a few of the lines from the uh, plate on it.
doesn't have to be everywhere, but it could be if you want it. Okay, so we have, again, very light layers, just little hints of things. We're just building an overall pattern. Okay, like that. And then you can um, use your baby wipe to wipe this off. While it's wet, it will come off. Otherwise, you need to soak them in the sink. If you really want to get all the stuff off, you're going to have to soak it in the sink. And the best thing that I know of to get it off is Murphy Oil Soap. It will dissolve the acrylic paint. Sometimes it takes a few days, but it will get the acrylic paint off. Okay, let's use a stencil. So this is a big um, Zinnia stencil is what it's called. This is from the Crafters Workshop. And let's use, I'm going to use Quinacridone Magenta Paint by Liquitex Basics. And I'm going to use a sponge. Or you could use a blending tool. Tim Holtz blending tool. You could do that. I'm just going to use a sponge that I'm going to bend in half so I don't have any sharp square edges as much. Maybe. And just add a little bit of stenciling. Again, keeping the paint very, very, very light so that it dries right away. hit and miss kind of stenciling here and there. Just building a design um, and layers so that when you look at it you don't really know exactly how it was created. That's one of my favorite things about doing mixed media kinds of, of uh, work or play as it were. Now you could also get sprays involved and you could spray on your paper and you could do all kinds of things like that. Um, I'm not spraying because I don't want to have to stop and dry it because I'm trying to work very dry if possible today. So you can see various little bits and pieces. I'm just using, just picking out various things from the stencil and just using it because it has so many pretty little designs on it. So I'm just using bits of it. And that immediately starts brightening it up and adding a little bit more interest. And that's fun. So we're not necessarily, this is all going to get cut up, so it doesn't need to be specific, you know, like a specific design. It's just making it interesting. So let's use one more stencil here because we can. This is a lace stencil. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a lace stencil. This is by Art Anthology. 
And I'm going to use a different color of paint. This time I'm going to use Thalo Cyan and Green. And I probably didn't say that correctly, but you guys know what I mean. <laughs> it's a PHTH kind of paint color. And I'm going to use another little sponge and we're just going to put some color on here. Very thin layer. Oops. I put the stencil on, put the sponge down and then promptly moved it. You can see little bits of it. I don't care that it's recognizable as uh, lace. I'm just mostly after some design. And that's a little heavier than I normally would like to go, so we'll see if we can back off on the paint a little bit. Again, got a little heavy with the paint here, but hey, it'll work out. And when you're doing stuff like this, I find that the best way to do it is just get in there and do it. Don't worry about it. Just get in there and do it. Just put it on. Don't stress about where you're putting color. Don't stress about what section of a design you're using just go for it you will be amazed at how much you like the paper or the design afterwards when you start cutting it into bits and pieces So I'm just sprinkling color and pattern around on the sheet, but again, keeping it extremely light in application so that it's going to dry for me. So I don't have to keep, you know, waiting and anticipating how long it's going to take to dry or get a heat gun after it and that kind of thing. The lace stencil is made by Art Anthology. Or sorry, wrong. I was wrong. Viva Decor. My apologies. Told you the wrong thing. Viva Decor. And there is the information right there. Told you the wrong thing. Sorry, sorry. And that's all the information there is on, on the uh, envelope. <laughs> Apologies for the wrong info. Okay, so there's the uh, kind of what we have going on at this point. And I think one more thing that I want to add to it is I want to go to the um, brayer with the stripes. You're welcome. Sorry, I, the art anthology stuck in my head because the person that I did a class with was a representative. She was the owner of art anthology and she used that stencil. So it got totally stuck in my head. But that's where that came from. That's why I keep the packaging <laughs> so that I can tell people. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, go to the stripes brayer and... Um, I'm going to use a different color, so let's see, what do I want to use? I think I want to use 
a little bit of white. So I'm going to use some white acrylic. If I can get the tube open. And I picked up a little pink so it's going to have pink stripes instead of just white. This is going to knock back some of the um, stenciling and so forth and chase it back into a lower layer. So I'm just picking up whatever's on the palette. Okay, so by adding the stripes here, let's see if I can show it to you, by adding the stripes in a lighter color, it begins to chase some of that, those other patternings. Bye, Dana. So it chases some of that down into, makes it look like it was behind, maybe a uh, um, window shade or something, you know, so you can see that. Okay, so we're going to call this done, and all these brayers and all this stuff I will soak in water with murky oil soap. That's how I get them clean. Again, some people don't clean their stuff, and that's perfectly up to them, right? So I'm just putting the lids back on all my tubes of paint and sticking them back in their box, which is beside me, just to make myself some room. And then what we're going to do, whoops. So, now I've got some room to work with. Okay, I think we got enough room to work with here. I'm going to hit this with a heat gun just to make sure it's 100% dry, so... We're going to heat it dry. This has a very light application of paint. Even though I used, you saw how many applications of paint I used on this, this hardly has any paint on it but it is filled with color and pattern. And the way that I tell if things are dry is I just use my hands. Now, the risk of using your hands to do this is that if you run into an area that's not dry, you're gonna smear it. And then I usually dry it from the back as well. So has anybody got any questions while I'm doing this? Kathy loves the light layers. I do too. It's just, you know, it's just something different. A different way to use your um, plate. Now, you could do the same thing you could paint this whole piece of paper except for the stenciling part you could paint the whole thing with your brayer only you're not going to get quite the same effect um, as you get by pulling the paint off the plate however so okay what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fold the sheet in half like so so I'm folding it in half
And I'm just going to fold it back and forth a couple of times just so I can... I'm going to tear it in half is what I'm going to do. You could cut it. You could use a paper cutter. You could do all kinds of stuff, but, you know... If you don't have any of that stuff available, just bend it back and forth a few times and then see if you can tear it. So let's see. Okay, got it. So now I have my double-sided paper without having to actually waste painting inside the other side of the paper. Now the advantage to painting both sides of the paper is if you do this one completely differently then you have another choice but we're gonna just go with it like this okay so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it into um, some feather shapes so I'm gonna show you a couple of ways to do that um, I'm going to use a die cut set. This is the Tim Holtz Oh, thanks Cindy. She says I make it easy and less intimidating. Good. This is the Tim Holtz um, Biggs Texture Fades. It is called Feather Duo. And so it comes with a die. Okay, so it comes with a die. This is one of the Biggs dies. And it also comes with an embossing folder. Those are what he calls the texture fades, but it's an embossing folder. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to, we'll just stay over here. I'm going to take this um, die and I'm just going to kind of randomly figure out about how much room I have to have. And you don't have to have the entire die because the you don't have to have the entire shape of this because the feather starts in here and in here. So you can skimp on the on the width a little bit, I found on this die. So I'm just gonna go around it with a pencil and cut it. And then I'm going to do the same thing one more time. I'm going to just do it face down just because it's just because I'm going to. Okay, so I've got two pieces of my paper that I made, like so. And it doesn't matter if you do them right sides together or wrong sides together, but I am going to have the same, I'm going to have it the same way. So either white sides in or the painted side in. So we're going to see if I can keep from sticking this together. <laughs> Since it's been freshly painted, it could be, it could be a big mess, but that's okay. We'll do it again if I mess it up. And I'm going to do, I'm going to cut two of these at once with a, this happens to be a big kick it's the same thing as the big shot it's a manual die cutting machine and then you have this for whatever you want to do with this. this you could use this for some you could make some cards and things out of this actually but I'm not going to do anything with that today And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate them if possible. So let's see. Yep, they're going to come apart. That's good. That's good. Okay, so I've got them separated. And I want the reason I did them back to back is because I want them to match up. So I can put them together and they'll match up. So I have a double sided feather like so. Okay, see how pretty that is? 
And then I'm just going to use a little bit of, um, let's see, maybe I'll do that after I emboss them. Yeah, let's do that after I emboss them. How about that? If I were not in a, if I were not trying to show you this on stream, uh, while I'm streaming, I would glue the, the pieces together and let them sit until they were completely dry. But since we're here together and we're going to try and keep moving, um, we're not going to do that. We're going to take our chances and emboss them and then glue them together. Okay, so I'm putting my platform, I'm setting the platform up the way it should be for the embossing and then you got to get these together as much as you can and put them inside the feather the embossing folder on the right feather shape now this is the trickiest part of the whole thing I find because you're trying to line these up with the embossing folder and there's probably some tricky little way to do this and I'm not going to worry about being tricky today so we're going to just pretend that it's going to work perfectly right we're just going to see pretend it's going to be perfect so again I'm putting them wrong sides together because I'm going to glue these together to make an, a feather a double sided feather in a minute so lay them in here as best you can. Hold your breath. And don't sweat it if it's not perfect when it comes out, okay? Put them together. Put them in your embossing machine. And it may or may not come out perfectly. Okay. Let's emboss it and let's just see what happens. Okay, here we go. So we're running it through. Yeah, we could we could use some washi tape or some masking tape. You are correct. We're living dangerously here. Okay, so here's our feathers. So here are our little feathers that have been run through the embossing machine. Okay. And then because we did them back to front like this, then we can take our, this is just tacky glue, like so. And I just put it on one side and I don't make a real thick application of the tacky glue. Just a thin thin application of the glue. And the reason I like tacky glue is because it will come off your fingers. So you can rub it off and literally rub your fingers together and the Aline's tacky glue will rub off your fingers. Then just match up your feathers match up the edges like so okay so just match them up don't squash them for all they're worth because you don't want to squash out the embossing right but that will allow them to then have a back to front and be embossed and be stuck together. Now you could glue them together before you did the embossing, but you, I really think you need to let them sit and dry before you run or get pretty dry before you do that. And then I just take my thumbnail or my finger or whatever and just kind of run down the center of that feather. While it's a little damp, it's kind of nice to do this. And um, give your feather a little bit of shape. You can also shape the edges. You know, you can kind of twist and turn those little tips of the feathers.
to give it even a little bit more of a natural look. So there's one of our feathers like that. So we'll do the same thing to the other one. You do have to be a little careful with them because um, the paper is damp and so you have to be a little careful when you start uh, trying to mold them um, because you can put your fingernail through the damp paper. So, you know, let it sit for a minute. Let it, um, you know, let the paper harden back up as the moisture leaves it and um, it'll be fine if you do put your fingernail through it okay so here's the other one again you have to line up if you've embossed them if you've cut them together and you've embossed them together pretty much they have to line up Okay, so there's one side, there's the other side, and everything should just nest right together. And then again, you can shape the feather because it is damp, so you can shape it, but you're going to have to be careful with this, otherwise you can, you can tear that feather, especially right in here in the spine area, you can tear that pretty easily. So. And then you can just kind of twist and turn the feather tips the way that you like them. And if you wanted to get real fancy, you know, you could try to take a, um, you'd have to be very careful, use a Copic marker and go around the edge. You'd have to be super careful doing that. Um, I, I'm not going to do that because I'm not that careful. I'm not that good. But there's another feather and they're going to be hanging when we come back next week and work on these they're going to be hanging like this so that's why I'm showing them to you this way so there's this one and that get my arm out of the way that one now if you want bigger feathers which I did um, I took and here are some of the uh, smaller feathers I did. I'll show you those first. So here are some of the smaller feathers. Now these are made with leftover brayer papers when I was jelly plate printing other sessions. So these papers are just leftover brayer papers. So these are some of the small ones. So junk paper can make beautiful things. Yes, it can. Here's another one. So I took those small feathers. Here's one more. I took the small feathers and I have a copy machine or printer, computer printer, that has a scanning function. And so I laid two of these feathers. I made sure they were flat these have been shaped but I made sure they were flat and I laid them on my scanner bed where I could copy and enlarge and I made um, two larger feathers okay so this one is this feather and I increased them 140 percent so that's what 140 percent looks like okay from this to this is 140 percent and this one um, I've got them turned upside down but that's okay this one is the other feather increased to 140 percent okay so I cut them I blew the blew up the feather size to 140 percent then I rough cut the paper so just roughly cut out the shape and I glued it onto plastic okay so this is plastic this is what it looks like you can use any kind of plastic this is old x-ray film 
I glued the paper onto the plastic, let it dry, and then cut it out. So now what I have is a feather pattern. So we're going to use that. Yes, we are. So this process is a little bit different than the other one because you're now you don't have a die. You just have to work with um, your own two little hands, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just cut this piece off here. And let's see, we'll just do one of these. So I'm going to, this time I'm going to glue the paper before I do anything to it. So I'm going to glue it. Now, this is where you want to use a glue that is drier. Like I used tacky glue on the other one. But this time, because I'm going to be cutting it with scissors, I'm going to use a drier glue. So I'm using a glue stick, a really good sticky glue stick. And I'm going to use a piece of scrap paper. And I'm going to glue both pieces of paper. So put a good coat of your glue stick, good sticky glue stick. Don't use a washable glue stick. Use a sticky one. So this is the Elmer's Extreme Glue Stick. You could use Yoohoo, you could use Avery. This is the Elmer's Extreme. Okay, so that one's got glue on it. And I need about two inches of glue here, so I'm just gonna, I'm not putting glue over the entire thing. But I find it works better if I have glue on both pieces. Glue stick on both pieces. That way if you miss a spot on one, you're surely going to catch it on the other one. And then I put these together. So just stick them together. like so. Okay? And with a clean brayer, let's see if I have one. I use a clean brayer, even though this doesn't look clean, it is, um, and brayer them together from both sides. Again, in a perfect world, you're going to let this sit and dry, right? And it will dry fairly quickly because the glue is not a super wet glue to begin with. And then, because this is backed with plastic, you now have a nice edge to work with. We're going to use this one. It's a little less detailed. And so you can put this on your double-sided paper now. And you can use a pencil. I'm going to use a um, I'm going to use a marker so you guys can see it. But I would use normally use a pencil. And because you backed it with plastic, you can just run right around the edge of your pattern of your feather pattern. And you could do this with a number of different sizes of the feathers if you wanted to. Because we're going to put these on a piece that's going to hang up. And we're going to do that next week. So I'm just showing you how to make the feathers. Now you could make them 500 different ways other than this too. You certainly don't have to do this the same way I'm doing it. Okay, so there's my enlarged, my supersized feather like so. And again, as I said, in a perfect world you would let this dry. But we're not. We're going to cut her out. So the first thing I'm going to do, and this is really, this is really a little bit wet. I'm going to just chunk around the edge and get rid of that extra stuff. Okay. You love the feathers? Good. I'm glad. And then I'm going to just cut around the edge. Now, you can. it's up to you whether you cut the black off if you use a pen. 
like this. And here's how I do this. The first thing I do is I go around the edge. I pay no attention to all those little divot things. Okay. I am just going around the edge. So it looks like I can't cut worth a bean, right? But this, this is, uh, these are old doll making tricks. Any of you that are doll makers, this harkens back to how I cut out individual fingers when I, after I've sewn individual fingers. And that probably doesn't make any sense to anybody other than a doll maker. But I go around the outside edge first. My hands have glue on them so they're sticking to things. Okay, so I've got the basic outline and now I come in and I do the little detail things. So let's see if I can show this to you. So I come in and I go detail and then detail from the, I'm trying to keep my hand out of the camera. But I approach it a little bit at a time when I'm cutting out this fine detail stuff. And that way you can get the exact, the exact edge that you need. So I would do the exact shape. So I'm going to do the same thing right here. Okay, so I'm going to come up here. And I'm going to come into that notch. And then I'm going to come from the other side. like that. If you try to do this, and I'll show you here in a second, up here on, let's say, this one. If you try to take your scissors, especially the paper is wet because of the glue stick is softened it from behind. If you try to go in here like this and make that tight turn and come back around, you might do it okay, but you also might chunk out a big piece of paper that you didn't intend to. So I tend to come in from both directions like this into that um, tiny little space and then I can come back and just snip out that little space and it comes out very very easily. Um, a little bit like a dream catcher kind of thing. Yeah, it's a little bit like a dream catcher. I'm sure you could call it lots of different things. But um, I'm going to call it an affirmation mobile. It's based on something I saw in a magazine. And I believe actually that was what the artist called it was a affirmation mobile. I thought that is a great name because there are just, there are lots of things that we need in this world for positivity, you know? But hopefully you can see what I'm talking about by the way I'm cutting it. Let me zoom in a little bit more and see if I can show it to you even better. Okay, so let's do it again. Let me finish. Let me finish this little these little bits here. I just find that it ta it's worth the time to come in and do all this detail cutting after I have the general shape created. So there's the, the whole one side of the feather. Okay, so let's do this part right here. Okay, this part right here. So I'm going to cut this line right here. This is from paint. So that doesn't, this line has nothing to do with anything. Um, I don't think. No, it doesn't. That's just from the painting. Okay, so we're coming in. I'm going to come to the deepest part of that little section and stop. Okay, so I've done that. I'm going to come to the other side and I'm going to come and do the same exact thing. So I'm going to come in to the deepest part of that. So now I have this thing. Okay, now I have that piece. 
And then I come back in and I just carefully snip because I bent it, it's being ornery. Um, I come in and I just very carefully cut that little bend at the very bottom of that shape. And you can get it to be very exact. Same thing down here on this one. I'm going to come in from one side. I'm going to come in from the other side. And then I come into the bottom of that shape and just barely make that curve. And sometimes I have to go do it a couple of times, you know? But that way I can, I can achieve the exact shape that I am after. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, let me trim out the rest of this. And as I said, I would normally not go around these in black. I would be doing these um, in pencil and then I would erase the pencil line. Uh, technically, to make this one salvageable, I would have to come back and cut out, cut off all these permanent black lines because I think the black line looks a little goofy. But on the flip side, I may look, change my mind later and go, yeah, not so bad. Okay, so then you end up with all this little trash, you know, left over. But better that than try to do it in one go, is my opinion. Okay, and so here is our original feather. Okay, so there's the original feather. I'm trying to line it up totally. And there is our, our uh, cut feather. So it's very, very, re very, very close to the enlargement. And the reason you can get that is because it's been backed with plastic and you have this edge. You have this edge to draw against. And that's how you can get that shape reproduced time and time and time again. And they all look the same. Okay, so let me roll off the glue off my fingers a little bit as much as I can. Now, if you want to um, do more with these feathers, you can take a pen and you can do it. This is where you can use the marker or you can use a Sharpie pen. I have one here somewhere. I can put my hand on it. It's rolling around under my stuff. Hold on a second. Well, I can't find it, but it's one of these, <laughs> except it's in black. So you can use a Sharpie pen or you can use a Sharpie marker, either one. Or if you can't, like we're going to try it on this. I don't know if this paint is dry enough to do this, but we're going to try it. The paint has to be totally dry or you will kill your Sharpie, okay? So we may, we may bury this Sharpie here in a minute. Hi, Ellen. Yeah, we may bury this Sharpie in a minute because this paint may not be dry enough to do this. If it's not, you can use a fine tip applicator bottle like this filled with a um, Createx or airbrush paint so it's fairly thin. So we'll, um, I have some other ones made here, some other feathers made. So we'll do, you know what, we're going to do this one. We're going to do this one because I know the paint is completely dry. So we're going to do this one with the marker, and we'll do this one with the fine tip applicator. That's what we're going to do. That way I don't run the risk of killing the Sharpie. So here's another feather done exactly the same way I just showed you. And then if you, this is just if you want to, but I think it's kind of fun. Because remember the other, the other feathers that are die cut, those feathers have the embossing. Okay, so they have something that gives them some uniqueness because they're embossed. These are just flat and you can, although you can bend them with your, you know, and shape and twist them, they still don't have that embossed look. So this is how 
I decided to do it. So I'm going to take my pin and hopefully you can see this. I may have to do this with the other camera because my hand's going to get in the way. So let's do it here because I think you can see a little better than I'll show you on the other camera. So this is using a Sharpie marker in the ultra fine point. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start down here close to the, the end of the feather and I'm just going to draw the spine in and I'm going to draw a double line. Okay, so I've got a double line like that. So it's just a double line, nothing fancy, not picky. Then I'm just going to add in the, um, the, the little feather bits. And I let those lines go from the spine. So they're coming from the spine. And I let them go all different directions. So what I'm doing is just getting some suggestion of detail on the feather. Okay. So just some suggestions. And then I go on the other side and I do the same thing. Are these real feathers? Are they real, meant to look realistic? Nope, not in the slightest. So have, just have fun. And I just go till I'm done. But I'm using this really fine point pen and the, the Sharpie, mar or this is the marker, the pen, which I lost again. Can you believe it? Here. This is a Sharpie pen, and either one of these works as long as your paint is totally dry. And then down here in this little area, I just do some little, like those, like they're little kind of downy feathers that come from a central point, kind of, more or less. Okay, so there's the feather, and there's what I'm talking about at the bottom, just like that. Then you can turn it over and do the same thing on the other side if you want to. So I'll show you some of them that I have here. So that is exactly what I've done here. And I did it on the other side as well. Then once it is done, then you can take your um, finger again, like I did on the earlier, on the little ones except this time you don't have to be quite so picky about it because the paper is pretty thick because you've got two pieces of paper that are glued together that have not been embossed so they're pretty sturdy and I just bend it along that spine with my fingers like this so I have bent the spine so I've shaped that a little bit and then you can just start twisting and turning your feathers the way you like them So they look like they've been caught in the wind a little bit. You know, it just gives them some interest and some shape. Okay, so there's that one. Does that make sense? I hope so. I hope it makes sense to you. So let me show you some of the different feathers because this one I haven't done on the back side, but I probably will go back. And to do it on the back side, I'll flatten this whole thing out and um, draw in the detail and then I'll curl it again. So this one you already saw and you can tell that I don't care about the colors I just put whatever colors together I want to use. Some of these are very colorful there will be others that will be very pale by comparison because I'm going to use the the um, paper that we did today 
and here are some other ones that I've not drawn on yet. So you can tell I did a, a lot of gold and yellow and green fa uh, paper at one point. So these are all done with the enlarged feathers. And then this is the one that we did today. So what we're going to do, since it's not 100% dry, let's um, play with the fine line bottle and see how we do with that. So this is black Createx paint. You like them? Good. Hi, Q. It's from a tree. There you go. Um, so this is black Createx paint in the fine line bottle. This is the finest gauge, which is 20 gauge with a little bit of water in it. And so let's see how we do with this one. And let's go back over here so you can see. So let's see how we do with this. So I'm doing exactly the same thing, but I'm just drawing with the fine line bottle. Now your lines are going to be thicker and also this is wet paint. So you've got to be a lot more careful with where you put your fingers. It will dry fairly quickly, but it is going to take a few minutes for it to dry. And if you're not careful, um, you can smear that. And then make sure that that little uh, wire goes back into the tip of your fine line bottle to keep that needle, um, that tube clear. Okay, so we'll put this over here so you can see. So it's a completely different look. It's much more um, mm, graphic, let's say, than the ones done with the fine line done with the uh, marker. Done with the marker, it's just a suggestion. You see more of the paint. When you do it with the fine line bottle, you're going to see more of the paint and less of the underneath paint. You're going to see more of the fine line paint. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to set this one over here so I don't throw my fingers into it. But that's what um, that's what I'm doing is I'm just creating feathers. So we have lots of feathers done with paper that I've colored in various ways. And I showed you one way today. Or you can use leftover paper that you have. Or if you have paste paper that you have, you can use that. You can do all kinds of things. And if your paper or your cardstock is sturdy enough, you don't even have to back it. You can just paint on both sides of it. Just use, you know, use one, um, use one piece of paper that you've got color on both sides. So, anyway, you don't need a ton of feathers for this project. But as usual, when I start doing something, I like to do a lot of it. <laughs> Yeah, you could use a white pen too. Hi, Tender. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you can just take the idea and you can go crazy with it and do whatever you want, right? That's the cool part about creativity. You can do, um, you can take an idea, which is often what I do. I spend a lot of time looking at books and magazines and, and not just that, but just the world around me. I do a lot of uh, looking at things and 
taking note of something that inspires me and then I just take that thing and then I just see you know how does that relate to what I like and how does it relate to my world and and then I just take that and I just go off and you know 14 different directions to see what it it's kind of like taking a whole bunch of it's like Seth's Seth Abder's 52 card pickup the idea of take a car, deck of cards and throw them up in the air and see where they land it's that kind of thing I do that with my supplies in my head you know where I take a whole bunch of supplies in my head and kind of toss them in the air and see what comes down you could work with paint pens also with these you wouldn't have to just work with the the fine line bottle you could work with a paint pen so yeah an affirmation mobile is a um, I don't have one here to show you but it's kind of like a dream catcher I would I would say that it's kind of like that it's just gonna be something fun to do so you'll have to come back next week and see how we do it okay any questions from anybody if not, um, I'm going to get the, we're going to let the sponsors come out because you know how that is, how that goes. If we forget about them, they get all huffy. <laughs> they get all huffy about life. <sighs> okay, I don't see any, um, I don't see any questions. Barb, if you do this on mylar, what kind of paint can you use that would stick? Uh, mylar. I would say a glass paint would stick to a plastic. Um, acrylic is going to stick to it, but probably not permanently. Um, yeah, I think you're just going to play with that one. How many feathers should you make? Um, depends on how big your mobile is going to be. How's that for an answer? <laughs> You're going to need at least five. Ten would be better. How's that? I always err on the side of overkill. Hello, Sylvia. Yeah, if you want to make feathers for next week, you are welcome to do that. You are welcome to do that. I think you, I, I think these feathers, I mean, I think these are cool um, to put in if you were sending a note to someone, you know, sending a card to someone, you could write something or put some of those Tim Holtz words or one of the Tim Holtz, um, he has one of his what's it called small talk or something they're up there on the shelf they're like quotes and different things you could put one of those on those and send it to somebody I mean they make a great bookmark too if you smash the smash the curls out of them you know they make good bookmarks I think they would be fun to send to people too so So Barbara Clark says she has um, a page ready in her journal for, with jelly, plate, jelly printed papers. Oh, cool. Good. Uh, absolutely. Bookmarks for your journals. Perfect. Okay, let's get the sponsors out. So if you have any last questions, pop them in the chat because now I'm watching you guys. So let's get the sponsors. Hi buddy. Hi buddy. Are you coming out? You coming out to see everybody? Are ya? Come on. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Charlie, are you coming? Okay. Let's see if we can get the sponsor cam ready for the close-ups <laughs> oh yes Charlie is apparently they've been in the window um, in the Sun it's warm here today it's quite warm here today 
humidity must be up. Oh, here he comes. Usually he'll make it out of the window and just just crash out. He's on the floor coughing, so we'll just let him just live down there today. <laughs> yeah, it is sponsor time. Good to see you, Shu. Um, so this is Chance, in case anybody happens to be new. And, um, and this is Chance. Charlie's on the floor coughing. He's doing a He's doing the old man cough down there going, <coughs> aren't you? Yes. I'm sure you can hear him. He's quite the cougher sometimes. Um, all right. So that is it. I don't have anything else to tell you other than we will complete this idea next week. Um, I just thought it was something. It was cool. It was a fun idea. And if I can find the, um, if I can find the original project, I will show you a picture of the inspiration, where I got the inspiration from, next week. So, all right. No other questions. I wish you all a wonderful weekend. Sympathy coughing, Donna Joy says. That's right. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here this week. I, uh, I hope all of you who are celebrating a holiday weekend have a wonderful weekend. I wish the rest of you a peaceful weekend, and I will see you next week on Friday, as we do every Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern for the next episode of Drama Free Friday. So you guys have a great weekend, and I will see you again very soon. So remember to get creative today because you know it's easy, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.